I'm super excited to talk about something that's seriously changing the game in AI. You might have heard a lot of buzz about AI agents that can browse the web for you, do complicated tasks, and basically act like your own digital helper. Well, OpenAI's new agent, called Operator, is right at the center of this wave, and it's powered by a model they refer to as Computer Using Agent, or CUA for short. There's a ton to unpack here, so let's talk about it. This video is sponsored by Growth School. All right, so basically, Operator is an AI that navigates the internet just like a person would. It clicks, scrolls, and types inside a built-in browser interface, and it can do multi-step tasks you'd normally do yourself. For instance, it can book flights, look for deals on your favorite soda, fill out forms, or even handle your to-do lists in apps. The real magic is that it's using the same GUIs, graphical user interfaces, that we humans see. No special developer-friendly interface or anything like that. It literally sees the screen as pixels, moves a virtual mouse, and types on a virtual keyboard. That's made possible by combining GPT-4 O, so the O stands for a special version, with vision capabilities. Advanced understanding of images with next-level reasoning, thanks to reinforcement learning. Now, OpenAI has run CUA through several tests. One major benchmark is called OS World, which checks how effectively an AI can operate an entire operating system like Windows, Ubuntu, or Mac OS. CUA managed a 38.1% success rate there, which is below the 72.4% success rate for humans, but it's notably above previous AI methods that hovered around 22%. Another set of tests, Web Arena and Web Voyager, focus on web browsing tasks like filling out forms or navigating e-commerce websites. Here, Kua hit 58.1% success on Web Arena and 87% on Web Voyager, again, an improvement over previous state-of-the-art models. That 87% might look really high, but keep in mind, Web Voyager tasks are often simpler, so there's still a challenge to get it closer to the human-level performance of around 78.2% on more complex tasks. To show some real-world examples, OpenAI tested Q with tasks like updating a software license in GitLab, finding canceled orders in Magento to figure out who cancels the most, merging PDF documents from emails into one file, compressing images in GIMP, or even finishing a grammar quiz on the Cambridge Dictionary site. All these tasks were basically done by letting the agent take over and click or type exactly like a person would. Sometimes it got stuck and had to try multiple times or eventually pass control back to the user, but overall, it has shown it can do a pretty wide range of tasks, albeit with some stumbles. OpenAI is rolling out Operator in a research preview for ChatGPT Pro subscribers in the US. Now, the monthly subscription is not cheap, 200 bucks a month, and that definitely positions Operator as more of a business or advanced user product for now. But OpenAI says they plan to open it up to additional tiers like Plus, Team, and Enterprise in the future. They also want to bring it to their API so that outside developers can build their own products using the same CUA technology. So maybe we'll see a new wave of apps that rely on a universal interface. Essentially, the idea of letting the AI look at screens, click stuff, and solve tasks in any digital environment. With tools like Operator, redefining how we work with AI, it's clear this technology isn't just a luxury, it's becoming essential for staying ahead in an unpredictable job market. That's why we've teamed up with Growth School for this video to bring you something truly valuable that could help you thrive in this rapidly evolving landscape. 2024 has been a whirlwind, jobs popping up everywhere, but layoffs are just as common. It's a wild ride, and even if things feel secure now, you never know what's around the corner. That's why I think having multiple streams of income isn't just smart, it's essential. Here's where AI comes in. With the right tools and skills, you could seriously start earning an extra $10,000 a month. Now, if you're wondering how to get started, Growth School has something really cool. They're offering a three-hour hands-on AI training where you'll learn to use over 25 powerful AI tools. Normally it's paid, but the first 1,000 AI Revolution viewers can join for free using the link in the description. On top of that, you'll get $500 worth of bonus resources just for signing up. The training covers everything job hunting tips, salary negotiation, mastering Excel, even content creation. And it's not just for tech experts. Whether you're in finance, sales, marketing, HR, or even still studying, this can work for you. Growth School has already helped millions of people level up, and this could be your turn to stay ahead in an AI-driven world. So if this sounds like your kind of thing, hit the link below to grab your free spot. 
Plus, don't miss joining Growth School's WhatsApp community. It's a great place to connect with others diving into AI too. Now that you know how to equip yourself with AI skills for the future, let's dive back into the fascinating capabilities and challenges of OpenAI's operator. And of course, this kind of web browsing AI agent has people stoked about convenience, but also worried about potential misuse. Operator can do so many tasks that if a malicious user tried to push it to break the law or do unethical stuff, that could be a big problem. So OpenAI says they've layered a bunch of safety measures in. For one thing, the AI is trained to refuse harmful or illegal tasks. They also keep a real-time block list for websites with content that's either adult, gambling, or otherwise off limits. Plus, they run automated moderation checks. If the AI or user does something suspicious, like repeated attempts at hacking or policy violations, they can issue warnings or block usage. There's also an offline detection pipeline that flags potential child safety or deceptive behavior. And another concern is if the AI might make mistakes that end up costing you, like entering the wrong shipping address or deleting an important file. With Operator, the model asks for user confirmation before finalizing any big moves, like sending an email or making a purchase. On top of that, Operator has watch mode for especially sensitive websites, so the user can directly supervise the AI's moves. And the AI tries to detect prompt injections, which is when a web page might try to trick it into doing something malicious, like revealing personal data or making unauthorized changes. They say they've tested it internally and that it only slipped up once in an early test, but obviously the cat and mouse game with prompt injections is never ending. They also have a separate monitoring system that can freeze execution if it sees suspicious commands on the screen. Now, in terms of everyday usage, the end goal is to have an agent that can replicate the ways humans handle all sorts of digital chores, like ordering takeout, booking dinner reservations, or searching online real estate listings. Actually, we're seeing more examples of that from OpenAI's rivals too. Perplexity AI just rolled out its own agent for Android. That one can set reminders, hail a ride, or book a table. Anthropic, which has an enterprise-focused model called Claude, already offers some agent-like features and just introduced a citations feature so you can see exactly where your LLM-generated answers are coming from in your documents. Meanwhile, Apple even launched an advanced Apple intelligence system integrated with Siri and partnered with OpenAI to bring chat GPT features to iPhones with user permission. In terms of raw performance, these agent-based systems used to be the stuff of sci-fi or at least borderline vaporware. But the arrival of advanced chain of thought reasoning in large language models like OpenAI's GPT-4.0 has started making them feasible. An executive told Reuters that the big shift is basically these LLMs can now break down tasks step by step, which is crucial when you're letting them roam across multiple web pages and fill out forms in real time. So how do you actually get started with Operator if you're in the US and on ChatGPT Pro? Well, you head over to operator.hatgpt.com and you can basically type in, hey Operator, book me a flight from LA to Seattle next Wednesday morning with a budget of $200. Or you could say, find me a three bedroom townhouse in Seattle on Redfin. It needs two bathrooms be between $600,000 and $800,000. And I want something with solar panels. Sure, it might not do it perfectly yet. And sometimes it only manages it three out of 10 times especially if you didn't specify the steps or the site's a bit quirky. But the vision is that you prompt it, it navigates everything, and you just watch until it's done or you step in if it gets confused. What about fancy text editing or controlling specialized sites? Right now, it's kind of hit or miss. The team at OpenAI explained that if the layout is unfamiliar or the tasks are super advanced, like creating a slideshow or precisely editing text in an HTML editor, the agent can get stuck in a trial and error loop. They gave an example that when you're using something like an HTML5 editor, you might want your text color changed or something aligned to the right. The agent can eventually do it, but might flail around. They also mentioned that giving the system more explicit instructions can boost the success rate. So you might say, click the filter section on the left, set the date to February 22nd, 2025 from 9 a.m. to midnight and so on, rather than leaving it to guess how to interpret full day coverage. Cost is a big factor. Some folks from the community are complaining, 200 bucks a month, that's steep. But this cost is presumably aimed at advanced or enterprise users. At the same time, some watchers expect that once the technology stabilizes, 
we'll see cheaper plans or special discounted models or even usage-based pricing for the operator API when it arrives. This is kind of like how GPT-4's initial pricing was set for a smaller group but eventually opened up. If you're curious about how well it defends against, say, phishing attempts or shady sites that might instruct it to do destructive actions, OpenAI says they have detection pipelines that monitor suspicious access patterns and can block them within hours. The agent can also identify weird prompts and ignore them. But as always, no system is invincible. Developer communities will keep an eye out for potential exploits. So that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think about AI agents like Operator. Do you see yourself using them or do you feel a bit nervous about handing over the driver's seat to a bot, even one that asks for confirmation? Personally, I can't wait to see how this evolves and how it might transform our daily digital errands. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.